Social media came alive last night after it appeared that a UK government committee had written to TikTok and to Rumble about Russell Brand, specifically about concerns that he might be able to monetize his content on the platform. Now, in this video, I'd like to address, first of all, whether this is real, and secondly, what it might mean and what I think about the whole thing. Uh, but first of all, if you are new to me, I'm a barrister of England and Wales, so please do hit that subscribe button and like the video and leave a comment. All of those sort of things help YouTube to spread my video to a wider audience. I really appreciate that because I enjoy to help you un understand law. And just as a heads up, I do have a partner for this video a bit later, which is NordVPN, but more about them a little bit later. Uh, so naturally, there's been a lot of backlash and to a degree outrage on social media about these letters, uh, arguments that it's government overreach, it's nothing to do with them, he's innocent until proven guilty, and so on. All of which might well be true. Certainly the innocent until proven guilty part, but that is uh, much more nuanced than a lot of people uh, make out. So first of all, let's take a look um, and decide whether or not this is real at all. Well, it absolutely is uh, real because if we go to the UK Parliament website, uh, for those uh, international viewers, the UK Parliament is obviously the supreme lawmaking body in the United Kingdom and committees within Parliament um, are set up and have statutory powers to do all sorts of things such as make inquiries, which includes calling people uh, to give evidence. Uh, it will conduct those inquiries, make determinations, make recommendations, but more about that a little bit later. Uh, so this is the Parliament website for the United Kingdom. It is an official website. These are official documents. Uh, so this is an official page, first of all. And this is for those that are unfamiliar, this is the Culture, Media and Sport Committee, which oversees many different things, um, most notably broadcasting and sport and anything to do with um, culture, as the name suggests, media and culture throughout the United Kingdom. Um, now, uh, a little bit more about the uh, committee, first of all. Um, it conducts many different inquiries. Um, such as looking at um, safety at major sporting events, um, looking at NFTs, which are non-fungible tokens, uh, and the blockchain many people might be familiar with, gambling regulations, anything to do with um, gambling and sports and that sort of thing, um, and everything to do with British film and television, women's sport, you name it, um, they do uh, all of these official inquiries. They also do non-official, as in non-inquiry work, which is uh, such as sessions to explore how different things work, um, legislative scrutiny, so looking at the legislation, is the legislation adequate, and so on. But coming back to the news on point, um, it is about these letters that are said to have been written. Now, it's not just to um, TikTok and to Rumble. The uh, committee has been in touch with um, the BBC and Channel 4, um, and indeed to The Sun. As you can see here, this is a public website. You can see all of these uh, letters here. They are all free to download and look at. And there are obviously responses to some of those letters as well. Now, just as a break from that, because that is quite heavy information, as I mentioned earlier, I do have a partner for this video, which is NordVPN, who supports me on this platform, which we need now more than ever. As you know, I don't easily take partners for this channel, but I have used NordVPN with my own money even before I was partnered with them. And through that partnership, you can get an additional four months on your subscription, which is exclusive to us as creators and a 30-day money-back guarantee. Now, as I said, I would never bring something to you that I wouldn't use myself. But with all this talk of privacy and protecting your privacy online, it is more prevalent now to do this than ever before. Because if your information gets into the wrong hands and bad actors, they can manipulate your information, manipulate your identity, and potentially steal your identity in the process. And if somebody created allegations about you and were able to make them look very real because they have a lot of information about you, that is obviously going to have a significantly disastrous effect on your life. But whilst you're browsing the internet, browsing different websites, even sending emails and logging into your bank, you are passing lots of your information and lots of your details to all of these different websites. NordVPN will help to prevent that from happening. What is a VPN? Well, it is a virtual private network. 
meaning it keeps everything private. There are no logs. It doesn't record what you're doing. So whether you're on a public Wi-Fi, particularly while you're traveling or whilst you're playing games, whilst you're shopping, and even whilst you're browsing other websites, which might even include government agencies, it will help to prevent any of those from spying on you and from taking your information. It will help you to avoid fake websites. It will help you to avoid these scamming and phishing attacks that try to steal your information. So all of which for a relatively small price in my humble view, but particularly with the exclusive discount that you'll see with my link on screen here and in the description below, you can get an additional four months and you get a money back guarantee if you're not happy with the service. It is super easy to use. Once you've downloaded the app, you click a button to quick connect. You'll get a new IP address, which is not the IP address linked to your computer or or your area and it will work with any of your devices including Apple devices including Android and Windows devices you turn it on you leave it and you have peace of mind so check out my link with the exclusive discount in the description below thank you for allowing me to support my partner for this video and now back to the video there is a comment from the chair which um, as I as I said as a neutral and balanced uh, overview of this whole situation I feel it necessary to bring this to your attention because not everybody will have read this. Many people will have just seen the letter on uh, X and maybe read some of the letter, uh, feel a little bit outraged by it and so on. That's not to say you shouldn't. Um, it might well be that, you know, your opinion is right, that this is overreach. Um, but the committee is there for a purpose and it is going to carry out that purpose. Uh, this is the note from the chair. Uh, this weekend, uh, we've seen some very serious and disturbing accusations again about Russell Brand's behaviour, and we understand that the police are now looking into some of these allegations. As a first step, our committee has decided that it will today write to media outlets, including the BBC, Channel 4, to understand the actions they are taking as we consider some of the issues around the allegations. The allegations have been widely described by reporters in the press and on social media as an open secret. And quite often, these secrets are shared between friends and colleagues just to keep each other safe. But my concern is when people in power are aware of rumours or stories, yet don't act. Then a culture is allowed to permeate. And that is the very point of uh, this whole story here. Uh, because as the name suggests, this committee looks at the culture uh, that permeates throughout the United Kingdom with anything to do with media, anything to do with sport, to essentially ensure the safety in general of everybody throughout the United Kingdom who may have anything to do with any kind of media, any kind of sport, who may, or who may be affected by any of those things. So that is the chair's comment as to why um, they have decided to write these letters. And now we're going to have a look at uh, some of those letters themselves. So uh, most of these letters look very similar to each other. This one is the letter. It's an official letter uh, on House of Commons uh, notepaper, albeit by email, and um, sent to the Director of Government Relations uh, for Europe uh, of TikTok. So obviously, TikTok has a governmental relations department. Uh, nothing in my video here is to say uh, whether these connections are right or wrong. Uh, it is just a natural organizational setup that such large companies with such large broadcast audiences are going to have these departments to talk to government on one level or another. So this letter here provides, I'm writing concerning serious allegations regarding Russell Brand in the context of a user of TikTok with more than 2.2 million followers on the platform. The culture media sports uh, is raising questions with the broadcasters who previously employed Mr. Brand or production companies who employed him to examine both the culture of the industry in the past and whether that culture still prevails today. So that really, that bit there sums up the intent behind the committee in writing this letter. But that's not the bit that everybody is upset about. It goes on. Although Mr. Brand no longer appears on television, he now has a follower base on social media, including TikTok, uh, where this weekend he republished his preemptive response to the accusations made against him by the Sunday Times and the Channel 4 dispatches. Obviously, what that is referring to, in case you missed it, is Russell Brand's video where he published it before these allegations were published to say that he received this letter and email with these allegations and lots of other recommendations. Uh, I 
put a small snippet of that in my original video. I'll link in the description below. But of course, you can probably find that full video by him yourself as well for full context. But that is the video that they're talking about, this preemptive video that they talk about there. It goes on, while we recognise that TikTok is not the creator of the content published by Mr Brand and his content may be within the community guidelines set out by the platform, we are concerned that he may be able to profit from his content on the platform. Um, platform is uh, obviously misspelled. Uh, but um, a lot of people are upset about that because um, they feel that it is government overreach to write to a platform um, about concerns as to whether he is making money from the platform. But again, as the na name suggests, it is responsible, this committee, for the culture that prevails and permeates with anything to do with uh, media and sport throughout the United Kingdom. It goes on, we would be grateful if you could confirm uh, whether Mr. Brand is able to monetize his TikTok posts, including his videos relating to the serious accusations against him, and what the platform is doing to ensure that the creators are not able to use the platform to undermine the welfare of victims of inappropriate and potentially illegal behavior. And the key bit here is the potentially illegal behavior, because, of course, these are just as it stands allegations. Uh, nothing has been proven. There are no charges, uh, as we are aware. And whilst the um, whilst this chair's comment uh, refers to uh, police inquiries and investigations, uh, I'm not aware that uh, there are um, specific police investigations into specific things. Uh, they have not yet, so far as I've seen, been published. The other letter, this one here, to Rumble, and there is a response from Rumble, I'll come back to in a moment, is virtually word for word the same, only it is um, writing about Rumble and not about TikTok. But the this significant difference is um, that it appears that Russell Brand is more likely to be making money on Rumble than he is on TikTok. But one significant notable difference that I would draw from this letter is the fourth paragraph, where it specifically asks Rumble whether it is joining YouTube in suspending the monetization of his channel on Rumble. Because clearly, Russell Brand has seen uh, Rumble as either a parallel or an alternative to YouTube. It, that paragraph reads, we will be grateful if you confirm whether Mr. Brand is able to monetize his content, including his videos relating to the serious accusations against him. If so, we would like to know whether Rumble intends to join YouTube in suspending Mr. Brand's ability to earn money on the platform. And then uh, the remainder is the same about the potential, uh, potentially illegal behavior. So whilst it's asking TikTok whether or not he's able to monetize them, um, it's asking uh, Rumble specifically whether it plans to join YouTube in suspending that monetization. Uh, Rumble responded, We regard it as deeply inappropriate and dangerous that the UK Parliament would attempt to control what is allowed, who is allowed to, excuse me, to speak on our platform or to earn a living from doing so. Um, it added, uh, while Rumble obviously deplores uh, those things, and all serious crimes and believe that both alleged victims and the accused are entitled to full and serious investigation. It is vital to note that recent allegations against Russell Brand have nothing to do with the content on Rumble's platform. Rumble stands for very different values. We've devoted ourselves to the vital cause of defending a free internet, meaning an internet where no one arbitrarily dictates which ideas can or cannot be heard, or which citizens may or may not be entitled to a platform. And so Rumble's response quite clearly, uh, the polar opposite of YouTube. YouTube has decided for whatever reason and upon whatever material it has or maybe not have considered, YouTube's decided to suspend the monetization and Rumble has not. Rumble has gone with the complete free speech approach. YouTube has gone with the cautious approach of suspending the monetization, presumably, uh, this is a big presumption on my part, but presumably until more information comes to light, either charges are brought or a conviction is made, or indeed if the allegations are either withdrawn or corrected or, or whatever the case might be. As I've said in previous videos, we do not know. So we cannot say whether those are true or false. Um, 
if there's an argument as to the balance of probabilities, then there has to be some information logically behind those allegations, because an allegation without any basis whatsoever is obviously libelous. And so for allegations to be published and printed online or in print, then they would be defamatory if they were to cause serious harm and there was no uh, proper defence, such as substantially true in the United Kingdom or based on opinion, which in itself has to be uh, based in some kind of uh, rooted fact. Now, as to whether this is government overreach to interfere with somebody's uh, monetization of their content and so on, um, there are two ways to look at this. Uh, on the one hand, it is, and on the one hand, it's justified. So on the one hand, of course, everybody should be free to uh, do whatever they wish within the bounds of the law, and that includes monetizing their content, and everybody is innocent until proven guilty. So on that argument, uh, there should not be a demonetization of somebody's content if they are not yet proven guilty of any offense, and there are just uh, allegations made and published. On the other hand, um, the committee the Culture Media Sport Committee, has a responsibility, a statutory responsibility, as a committee and statutory powers uh, with which to uh, investigate whether anything is likely to cause harm to anybody throughout the United Kingdom. And that includes anybody that potentially uh, may be harmed by either the allegations themselves, in direct connection with those allegations, or even maybe tangentially affected by those allegations, i.e. other victims that might be affected by the content that is being monetized off the back of these allegations. Now, that is a, a difficult one to get your head around because it flies in the face of free speech and it flies in the face of a free community, free market, and so on. So there is a, a very fine line to be drawn here and a very tight rope that this committee has to walk to be able to carry out its role, but without stepping over that line. Now, clearly, many of you are going to feel that this has stepped over that line by having a government committee write to private companies and virtually insist, I mean, when a government asks something, it's not really asking whether or not someone is going to do something. It is generally saying, we would like you to do this. So by asking, we would like to know if you are going to do this, what it is really usually saying, in my view, of course, is we would like you to do this because we've got reasons. Now, one thing I will say is that this does, for me, highlight a suspicion, let's call it, um, that there might be more information or more evidence that sits behind these letters and indeed the publication of the allegations in the first place. And frankly, whilst I obviously don't want to condemn Russell Brand and I'm not jumping to his defence either because we don't know, because we haven't seen any of that information. So again, to be abundantly clear, I'm neither defending him nor am I supporting him. And likewise, the committee here, I'm not supporting the committee in writing those letters, and I'm not standing against them. What I'm doing is giving you reasons why they would do so and reasons why it might be overreach. But what I can say is that I do have a suspicion that there, there must be more behind this. And in most cases, in my experience and in my professional view, um, not that this is in any way legal advice, but in my professional view, that there must be something behind the allegations and behind the letters, at least sufficient reason to write and send these letters in the first place. And it goes without saying that if not, if if they are merely allegations and there is absolutely nothing behind them, then many of you would probably be right to conclude that this is overreach and it is a knee-jerk reaction to allegations that may be unfounded and there may be no evidence behind. But what I can say in the round is that we don't know anything. All we do know is that these letters have now been sent. So I am surprised that this has reached government level so quickly and to the extent that uh, the committee has stepped in. And because of that surprise, 
it reaffirms my suspicion that there must be more behind it. So uh, whilst there is nothing really to analyze yet, one of the comments on my videos um, likened this to the Johnny Depp and Amber Heard trials. Now, in that trial, both the UK trial and the US trial, different trials, different defendants, we've been around this block before. But in those two trials, there was mountains of evidence. There was live evidence in court. We could watch that and review that live, which I did do so. I formed my views based on the evidence, as I would as a lawyer if I were in part of the case or advising on the case, and I gave you my views throughout those videos. There was a lot of material there to digest and to analyse and to come to reasoned views to, you know, to assess where evidence is contradictory or just not sustainable and unreliable. And that I gave you my views on. Again, in best I could, a neutral way. And neutral doesn't mean um, staying right in the middle all the time. Neutral could be, I've looked at both sides and this is what I think of this evidence, much like a judge will do. A judge will look at evidence and say, I prefer this evidence because it was consistent and it was never changed. Against this evidence, which was, you know, it changed when pressed, is a common phrase judges use. Um, the account was changed when the witness was pressed on that evidence. And so looking at something neutrally, doesn't mean not taking a side in inverted commas. Um, it uh, will appear to be taking a side sometimes. But when looking at a case like this, there is no evidence at the moment. The only evidence that we have is what has been published, what is available, which is allegations, a set of allegations uh, against Russell Brand that, again, as I repeat, uh, there must be something behind those for them to publish. Now, if that is not the case, and there is no body of evidence upon which all of this is based, then it is not interfering with the course of justice to say um, that there is quite likely a lawsuit that would follow, because this quite clearly passes the threshold of defamation, is quite likely to pass the threshold of defamation because serious harm is anything that harms someone's reputation that causes serious financial harm, it will qualify. And unless there is a, a valid defense such as this is substantially true or it is wholly rooted in opinion and there is an evidential basis for that opinion and so on. Um, but for, for more analysis on that, I will defer to the expertise of our Alan Robertshaw Esquire who used to work for the newspapers. And so um, I will grab him and we'll probably do a, a joint chat on this and see what we think about that without going past the bounds of, of what we're really allowed to say. Um, but that thus far is all we can really comment on it. So for those that are wondering, these letters are very real. Um, I am surprised that it's uh, reached this level and uh, to so many so quickly. Um, but as I said, that reaffirms suspicions that there is something very wrong here. Um, and at the very least, that uh, this committee is fulfilling its role by protecting the community. Uh, and that's all I can really say. Do I agree with it? That is difficult to say without having seen any evidence. Of course, if there is a body of evidence that supports all of this, then yes, I would agree with it. But without the evidence, I can't say that I agree with it. Um, but I can't say anything at all, really, because there, there is no evidence to review. There's only the existence of these letters and this situation that we find ourselves in. So I hope you found that a balanced, neutral overview. Again, um, I'm not prepared to take sides, and some people um, think that I should, but I don't. This is, this is not a situation for taking sides. This is all I can give you as a neutral explanation of what is happening and why it's happening. So I hope you found that useful. If you do, please do consider hitting that like button and uh, subscribing. That does help my channel grow um, because us as creators, I very well understand um, that we put ourselves out here on these platforms in, in our own way, different ways. I put myself out here to help you to understand law and occasionally give you my opinion. And on the very few occasions that I've given you my opinion, I've had one or two official complaints about me to my regulator. 
And they, they haven't gone anywhere because they were just my views. They were not stepping out of the bounds of what I'm professionally allowed to do, even in my own private time. Um, but um, that is the risk that we take by uh, putting ourselves out here on this platform. So I hope you found that useful. Please do subscribe. Uh, thank you for watching and I'll see you next time. <music>